ACT Inc. Metland Systems. Products designed for today and dedicated to the future. At a residential technology center in Southern California, efforts are focused on ways to reduce energy costs without sacrificing comforts or conveniences. This home demonstration unit features a new product that saves both water and energy. It's a product that is so effective it meets all of California's stringent criteria to earn energy credits for new residential construction. And it also saves water. What is this amazing product? What does it do? How does it work? It's the Metland Hot Water Demand Pumping System. In most houses today, it takes, oh, somewhere between one and four minutes for the hot water to get from the hot water tank to the furthest fixture in your house. Well, at two and a half gallons a minute, that's a lot of wasted water and a lot of time standing at your sink. Well, I'm going to solve that problem. This is a hot water on demand system made by Metland Systems. This system is really easy to install. Now the first step is to turn the water off at the main shutoff outside the house. The shutoff on most houses is of the gate valve variety. It'll probably take five or six complete turns to shut it off. Then I'll open a hose bib and back inside the house I'll open one of the water valves so that the system can drain. The unit is completely self-contained. It consists of electronic controls, a bronze pump, and a valve that operates with the pump. In other words, when the pump is on, the valve opens, and when the pump turns off, the valve closes. The system works by circulating cool water that normally goes down the drain back to the hot water heater through the cold water line. At the same time, it fills the hot water line with water from your hot water heater. Now, when the water reaches the faucet, the valve shuts off, and the pump turns off automatically. Under the sink, I'll loosen the uh, flexible supply lines, both the hot and the cold, and remove them. Be sure to have a container because you're going to get a little dripping from these lines. Then I'll remove the shutoff valve. I need to use two wrenches here to apply opposing pressure. That way I'll be sure not to kink the copper line. This is a special fitting that comes with the unit. One end has an iron pipe thread. The other has a compression thread. Now this end fits back on the pipe that came out of the wall under the sink. This is designed also for a compression fitting. First I'll put a nut on it, then the compression ring, then I can reattach the uh, shutoff valve that I took off earlier. Again, I'm going to use two wrenches and I'll put uh, opposing pressure. Okay, one goes down here, the other wrench up here and not over tightening this. And by the way, you'll notice I didn't use any Teflon tape because compression fittings don't require Teflon tape. There. Perfect. Now it's ready to install. With the fitting installed, I can now go about reattaching the supply lines. These are also compression fittings, so I don't need Teflon tape. I'm going to hand tighten these, and then with a wrench, I'll give them another half to one turn. In preparation for putting the system in, I've attached some flexible stainless steel line. Now before I do that, however, I'm putting two or three, four wraps of Teflon tape in a clockwise direction around the threads. This isn't necessary for waterproofness because this particular flex line has a washer inside, but I'm doing it because it lubricates the threads and makes it easier to get the nut on and off. Well, you may have been wondering, how the pump turns on and off. There are actually two ways to do that. One is with a uh, remote control, and this is the receiver. Now the attachments are pretty simple. Green wire to green wire, black wire to black wire, white wire to white wire, all of them tied together with wire nuts. The other end of the flex line gets attached to the fittings that I put in earlier. I want to tighten this really snugly there. That's good. Now the unit itself sits on the floor of the cabinet. The transmitter gets hung on the wall. The other method of operating the pump that I talked about is through a button that gets attached to this wire. The wires wrap around the screw terminals on either side of the button. It doesn't matter which color goes where. Now I've drilled a hole in the cabinet. This whole unit just gets fed back through, pushed in place, there. I've turned the water back on, and now the easiest part of the project, plugging it in. 
To start the pump, I could use that button that I just put in, or I can use this remote. This is a little transmitter that sends a signal to the receiver underneath the sink. This is going to get installed in the bathroom so the occupants, first thing in the morning, they can get up, push this button, and have hot water. Now I'm going to test this out. Boy, that is a really quiet pump. You know, let's turn this on, get some water going here. Ooh, that's amazing. It's already getting hot. This system costs around $350. But when you consider that the average household uses 12 to 14,000 gallons of water a year, just getting water from the hot water heater to the furthest fixture, that's going to be quite a savings there. Plus, there's another 15% savings in water that you don't have to heat up. So this system's going to pay for itself in about three years. Plus, you get the convenience of having hot water when you need it. ACT Inc. Metland Systems. Products designed for today and dedicated to the future.